Good morning. Welcome to Ben Brinfro Thought for the Day for Tuesday 26th of April. This morning we are focusing on the Old Testament reading for the day, which is the first nine verses of the book of Joshua. I'm reading from NRSV. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed across the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The book of Joshua starts at one of the great inflection points in the biblical story of the Jewish people. We've had the drama of the Exodus and the long years spent in the desert learning the hard way about the responsibilities and depth of faith required by God of his chosen people. Now, finally, for a new generation of Jewish people, the entry into the land promised by God to Abraham is at hand. I wonder who reads the rest of the book of Joshua these days. Most of the book can easily but uncomfortably read as a massive and extraordinarily violent land grab of the time which we so deeply deplore both in the Russian invasion of Ukraine and in the Russian Orthodox Church's support of that invasion. But the spiritual significance attaching to this inflection point in Jewish history, for Christians as much as for Jews, lies not in the historical veracity or otherwise of the tales of conquest and slaughter depicted in the book of Joshua. The Joshua, the story tells that it was not military prowess that brought down the walls of Jericho, or indeed which enabled the Israelites to cross the Jordan into, the, into Canaan. It was the Israelites' trust in a series of mysterious and frankly rather wacky sounding instructions given to them by God through their leader, Joshua. The lesson here is surely not about people's relationship with other people, but about people's relationship with God. A God who beckons us towards his promised land, if only we will place our faith in him and seek to do his will. A God who has brought us out of the wilderness of sin, that we may be brought into abundant life. A God who offers us his strength to enable us to get there, if we will allow him to do so. Paul articulates this more sp in more specifically Christian terms in his letter to the Ephesians. 
It is Ephesians from which, not coincidentally I'm sure, the New Testament reading for today is taken. Paul prays in chapter 3 that we may be strengthened in our inner being with power through God's Spirit. In the opening words of the reading in chapter 6, he exhorts the Ephesians, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armour of God. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You probably know the rest of that passage. It's another martial analogy to be sure, but again only an illustration for its time. The message itself, the commission which God gives to Joshua in that Old Testament reading, is timeless. It is a commission which, as we look at today's world, we all need to receive and take to heart. It was never put better or more simply than in the last verse of that commission. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen.